I will endeavor to briefly acquaint you with the life of Edward Alexander Boucher, for whom this conference is named in honor. Edward A. Boucher was an educator, religious worker, and community activist who lived from 1852 to 1918. He taught mathematics and science to several generations of students, and he inspired them to seek higher levels of knowledge and to become productive members in their communities. Boucher was born on the 15th of September, 1852, in New Haven, Connecticut, in America. From his early years, he showed academic promise. Boucher graduated first in his, in his class from Hopkins Grammar School. He entered Yale College in 1870, where he became one of the outstanding students of his class. At his graduation in 1874, Boucher ranked sixth in his class of 125. In an upcoming article, Ronald E. Mickens, a member of our Boucher ICTP Council and a professor of Clark Atlanta University, speaks of an important event in Boucher's life during his last year at Yale College. Professor Mickens informs us that, quote, in his senior year, Boucher was approached by Alfred Cope to remain at Yale and obtain the doctorate in physics. Cope was on the board of managers of the Institute for Colored Youth, a Quaker school for blacks located in Philadelphia. Cope's personal interest in science and his desire to have students at ICY, the Institute, receive training in this area led him to develop a scientific department for whom he hoped Boucher would direct after finishing advanced studies at Yale. Boucher agreed to stay at Yale for two years of graduate study, provided that he be guaranteed an initial salary of $1,500 a year at ICY. Pope agreed to this request and provided the funds necessary for Boucher's graduate education, unquote. In fulfillment of his commitment to Alfred Cope, Boucher returned to Yale as a doctoral candidate in science in the fall of 1874. At commencement in 1876, he received a PhD in physics in the area of geometrical optics. The title of Boucher's dissertation was Measuring Refractive Indices. Boucher continued to fulfill his commitment to Cope by teaching for the next 26 years of his life at the Institute for Colored Youth. While at the Institute, Edward A. Boucher was actively involved in the general welfare of the black people in Philadelphia. He did extensive lecturing before various church, trade, and community groups. He also involved himself faithfully in the Philadelphia Yale Alumni Association. Among his professional affiliations were his membership in the Franklin Institute, one of America's oldest scientific societies, and in the American Academic, excuse me, American Academy of Political and Social Science. Boucher was a well-rounded man, and regardless of the nature of the activity in which he involved himself, people spoke of him with esteem and gratitude. However, great people often become victims of the times in which they live. Around the last turn of the century, it was believed by some that blacks were not capable of responding to the various efforts exerted on their behalf. Moreover, it was believed by some that the academic program at the Institute for Colored Youth was too advanced for the practical needs of, the, of its students. Among those who held these beliefs was Booker T. Washington, who advocated industrial training for blacks rather than classical and academic education. The managers of the Institute for Colored Youth were among those who responded favorably to Washington's ideas. In their response, they fired Boucher, along with the other Institute teachers in 1902. The managers then disbanded the institute and established a completely new facility whose curriculum was based on the industrial arts. Clearly, Boucher did not approve of their actions. After leaving the Institute for Colored Youth, Boucher held several posts, sometimes due to the influence of his friends. He was a business manager for a hospital, a United States Inspector of Customs, a director of academics at an industrial school, a high school principal, and finally, a professor at Bishop College in Texas. Dr. Boucher retired from teaching in 1916 due to illness. He later died the 28th of October, 1918, in New Haven, Connecticut, the city of his birth. In conclusion, I leave you with a statement that Boucher wrote for his 25th Yale College reunion class book. He wrote, quote, I have endeavored to discharge my duty as a teacher to those coming under my care, and I have aimed to be a good citizen and to exemplify in my life the models of our alma mater. Thank you.
much, uh, Professor Park, for that uh, historical note on uh, the life of uh, Professor Boucher. I apologize for the wrong introduction. Now I will call upon Professor Brown, the chairman of the Edward Boucher Institute in the United States. Thank you. Directors, Excellency, President of the Republic of Botswana, the Honorable Mohai, the Honorable Minister of Education, Dr. Chepi, the Director of the International Center for Theoretical Physics, Professor Barosoro, the Vice Chancellor, Professor Sieverts, Deputy Vice Chancellors, Open, Opening Ceremony Chairperson, Professor Mbocheni, Director of the African Office of Edward A. Boucher ICTP Institute, Professor Aloti, members of the Edward A. Boucher Council, deans, heads of departments, participants, ladies and gentlemen. What are the options for developing nations with limited technical infrastructures, emerging technical expertise, and undernourished economies trying to catch up with contemporary developed opportunities? A group of African, American, and other international scientists will propose solutions at the third Edward A. Boucher International Conference on Physics and High Technology for the Development of Africa, which of course begins in a very few minutes. The Edward A. Boucher ICTP Institute is the sponsor and principal organizer of the conference. One of the primary financial supporters of the conference is ICTP, along with a number of Botswana institutions and corporations. The Department of Physics at the University of Botswana, in collaboration with the African Society of Physicists and Mathematicians, are serving as the host of this year's conference. The conference, the third in what will eventually become a gathering every four years, will bring together scientists from around the world to discuss recent research results and expose participating colleagues and students to the fruits of transatlantic scientific cooperation. Moreover, participants will focus on specific strategies to grow scientific and technical communities in African countries. Roughly 50 technical papers will be presented on topics ranging from applications of nonlinear dynamics to solar energy applications in Africa. The conference organizing committee consists of myself, a distinguished member of technical staff at Lucent Technologies Bell Laboratories in Norcross, Georgia, Professor Ayaku M. Bach, Professor of Physics at Morehouse College in Atlanta, Georgia, Professor Lonzi J. Lewis, Associate Professor of Physics at Clark Atlanta University in Atlanta, Georgia, Professor Joseph A. Johnson III, Distinguished Professor of Science and Engineering at Florida a and University in Tallahassee, Florida, and Dr. Atando Adedoyen, lecturer in the Department of Physics, University of Botswana. The late great Nobel laureate and director of ICTP, Professor Abdus Salam, conceived what, is, what was to become the Edward A. Boucher ICTP Institute in 1988. Under Professor Salam's leadership, a council was appointed in 1989, out of which the institute emerged. The council, presently a 13-member body comprising of six African, six African-American, and one representative from ICTP, continue to guide the work of the Institute today. This main charge, as expressed by Professor Abdus Salam, is to address the problems associated with growing a viable scientific and technical community in African countries. The Institute's major points of focus are one, fostering of collaborative relationships among African, African American, and other international scientists. The, two, the dissemination of research results and the development of new ideas, insights, and activities on the current frontiers of science and technology. Three, the training of PhD students, mathematicians, and engineers in African countries. Four, the staging of international conferences on physics and high technology for the development of African countries, and five, to enhance the impact of science and technologies on sustainable, sustainable development in Africa. 
The first conference was held at ICTP, as mentioned earlier, in 1988 under the leadership of Professor Salam. The second conference was held in Accra, Ghana in 1990, where an institute maintains its regional office, as you heard earlier. In addition to a number of workshops, which were held in Ghana in 1993, 94, 95, and 96, and also workshops in, in Atlanta, Georgia in 92 and 95, to date, three PhD students have, re have uh, received their degrees as a result of the Institute's efforts. Two of the recent PhDs are working at the University of Benin in the Republic of Benin, and the other one is working at the University of the Congo in the Republic of the Congo. Also, two PhDs are in the pipeline, one from the University of Benin in the Republic of Benin, and the other from the University of Cape Coast in the Republic of Ghana. I must say that we could not imagine a better opening ceremony for this third Edward A. Boucher International Conference. Indeed, we are all blessed. Blessed not only by God's grace, but also by the pres presence of the pres President of the Republic of Botswana, the Director of the Abdul Salam International Center for Theoretical Physics, and all other distinguished platform and conference guests. We, the African, the American, and other physical scientists, engineers, mathematicians are indeed humbled by your presence. We are motivated intensely to ensure the success of this conference, the aims of the Institute, and we invite and urge each and every one of you to attend our sessions. Thank you, and God bless you all. activities of your institute. It clearly sounds like a success story of a collaboration between uh, physicists in Africa and the United States. And we hope that you'll be success successful in your future uh, conferences. Thank you. I'll now call upon uh, Professor Alote, who is the director of the Africa office of the Boucher Institute. Professor Alote. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Your Excellency, the Honorable Professor G. Mohai, President of the Republic of Botswana, Madam Chairperson Bukani, Dean of Science, the Honorable Minister of Education, Dr. Chepe, Vice Chancellor of the University of Botswana, Professor S. Sebed. Director of the International Center for Theoretical Physics, Professor M. Beresoro, Chairman of Edward A. Boucher ICTP Institute, Professor Charles Brown, members of Edward A. Boucher Council, the student invited guests, deans and heads of the department of the University of Botswana. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure, privilege, and honor to make a short statement during the open ceremony of the third Edward A. Michel International Conference on Physics and Technology for the Development of Africa. In my capacity as the Director of African Office of the Edward A. Michel Institute, and as the president of the Society of African Physics at the Before I begin, I should be permitted to salute His Excellency, President Festo G. Mohai, for accepting our invitation to this open ceremony, despite his numerous state duties. His presence here this morning is ample with the stations that His Excellency shares the view with us that human knowledge, particularly scientific and technical knowledge, and human progress go together. We are very grateful to you, sir. We are also very grateful that the new appointed director of the Salam Center for Drug Crime Physics in Trieste, Italy, Professor 
Margaret Angelo Nosoro has come to participate in this conference. His presence in this conference, a full short time in office, shows his commitment to development of science and technology in Africa. Madam Chairperson, I would like to join the Vice Chancellor of the University of Botswana in welcoming Your Excellency, the Honorable Your Excellency the President, the Honorable Minister of Education, and the Director of International Center of Photography to Botswana. Your Excellency, on Friday, 26 August 1983, 34 African scientists from various parts of Africa held a meeting at ICTP and resolved to form the Society of African Research Administrations. The formal liberation of the Society took place 14 months later, also in ICTP on 8th of October 1984, and was attended by over 100 participants from all of Africa. This was in the presence of His Excellency Dr. Agrotti, former Prime Minister of Italy, and at that time, he was the foreign minister of Italy. Out of concern for the lack of cohesive and functional link among American scientists, we organized a, a workshop on cultural development and design in Africa and computer science in the security in, in Kenya. The show of plan continue of the workshop of the Shari of Tanzania is here with us today. At that workshop, your Excellency, one of our resolutions was to call international organization that identified with our aim and objective to consider sponsoring centers of excellences in rural institutions in Africa. We are, we are happy to say today that as we saw the needs of our resolution, and through this office of external activities, has established about a dozen affiliated centers about half of which are in Africa. Four of the greater centers in Africa focus on laser physics and its application. These centers form a network called the African Laser Atomic and Marotra Lab Network. The fifth in the series of this workshop was held here last week and hosted by the University of Botswana. Your Excellency, because our society was, a in a, a, was already existing, it was not difficult for the former director of RCTP, Nobu Beret of the Salam of Bessel to encourage an association with the South African American Physicists. Our first meeting, the first during the Treasure Conference on Physics and High Technology for Development in Africa, was held in RCTP in 1988, while the second was held in Accra, Ghana, in 1990. <coughs> I'm very happy to state that the, the Council of Ministers of OAU in 1990, by resolution, granted observer's status to the South African Business Administration. In our Accra, Your Excellency, we decided that our next meeting should be held in Southern Africa. But for reasons which we cannot go into this time, we were not able to do so until today. I recall that at a meeting organized by the South African Foundation for Research, FRD, in March 1996, to discuss the issue of networking among scientists in Africa, the issue of the next building of the Bushelis Conference was discussed by the General Secretary of our Society, Dr. Abidini, and myself. It was at that meeting that we decided, which was attended by our chairperson of today, Professor Puchani, that Dr. Adudeni had said he would seek the permission of the University of Botswana as a host for the third Republican meeting. I'm therefore personally grateful to the government and people of Botswana for the kindness shown in accepting to host this meeting. The holding of this meeting this year is very appropriate and commendable, since this year is the 10th anniversary of the founding of the Duet system. 
One of the main objectives of the Institute is the cooperation. We would like to use the opportunity of our meeting here in South Africa to initiate cooperative research and development programs with our colleagues in this part of Africa. Since its creation by the late Professor Abdul Salam, the industry has made some progress. It has sister in producing three African PhDs, as I said before, who are currently working in the Republic of Benin and the Democratic Republic of Africa, respectively. With the help of the institute, currently about 10 students are currently doing PhD courses in various universities in the USA. Eight African American professors have taught in universities in Africa. Similarly, on the aspects of the system, four African professors have taught in the US, University of the USA. In 1995, the African office started a series of annual regional colleges and workshops in mathematics, which is known as the Dr. A. Machine Regional College and Functional Analysis and its application of the equation in Accra, Ghana. This regional college is attended by about 30 young professors and researchers from all over the West Africa sub region. And we have lecturers and professors from Africa and from America and Ghana. Among the universities and institutions in the USA that have participated in the Shea program may include William and Mary College, from this from USA. William and Mary College, Hampton University, Clark Atlanta University, the University of Michigan, the University of California, Berkeley, the City College University of New York, Florida A&M University, AT&T Bell Laboratory, University of Massachusetts at Amherst. In Africa, the present institution of perspective and activity, University of Abidjan, Côte d'Ivoire, Obama Framid of Law World University in Nigeria, University of Science and Technology in Ghana, University of Nigeria in Suka, <coughs> University of Cape Coast, University of Benin, University of Kinshasa, and Purple of Congo. Madam Chairperson, in conclusion, our hope is that success already recorded in other parts of Africa will filter through our initiative in Southern Africa. In fact, this is where the main motivation and reason for holding the, 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 the Tech Bebushe conference in this part in Botswana, so that our colleagues in the, this part of the Africa will fully share the benefits of it with a Bebushe system. We are, ready, we, are, we are ready to join hands with institutions and individuals for the full emancipation of our people for government, poverty, and disease. Your Excellencies, Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Aloche, for that uh, information on the formation of the Society for African Physicists and Mathematicians. I am pleased to note uh, the importance you place uh, to networking of scientists and the fact that you have benefited from this link with the Boucher Institute through training, through visits of your scientists. And uh, to us in Botswana, I think it is an honor that you have been given the opportunity to host uh, this workshop, which uh, coincides with this 10th anniversary of the <coughs> Institute. Thank you. I'm now going to call on uh, Dr. Adedoin to make some remarks. Your Excellency, President of the Republic of Botswana, Honorable Mohai, the Honorable Minister for Education, Machepe, the Chairperson, Professor Mbuchane, Director of the International Center for Theoretical Physics, Professor Virasoro, 
Deputy Vice Chancellor of Finance and Administration, Dr. Nzinge. Chairman Edward Boucher, ICTP Institute, Professor Brown. The Director of the Africa Office of Edward Boucher Institute, Professor Aloje. The Dean of Science and other deans. Head of Physics Department, Professor Devon, and other heads of department. Participants, ladies and gentlemen. Your Excellency, our gathering of today is a continuation of the good work started at the International Center for Theoretical Physics in 1984. As our president, in his remarks, the president of our society, the Society of African Physicists and Mathematicians, SAPAM, dealt at length with the history of our organization. I would only add that in 15 years of existence, we have organized over 40 scientific meetings in Africa. It is in apparent recognition of this that the 52nd Council of Ministers meeting of the Organization of African Unity granted us Observer Category C in July 1990. Your Excellency, while these achievements are perhaps unparalleled in Africa, we still feel we have a lot to do. There are 20,000 scientists in Sub-Saharan Africa but this is just 0.5% of the world total. Publications in scientific journal by these scientists is 0.8% of the world total. Out of the 43 least developed countries of the world, 37 are in Africa. It is therefore difficult for us to rest. Our concern for improving the lot of our people will always keep us going. We are able, Your Excellency, to make impact because of the support we have received from many governments in Africa and the ICTP. Material resources obviously alone cannot, will not have done all this without the sacrifice and dedication of individuals who have committed their lives to the advancement of science in Africa. As General Secretary of SAFA, I would like to place on record the sterling qualities of our President, Professor Aloje. In my contribution to a book which was commissioned by his wife to mark his 60th birthday, I said there can never be another Francis Kofiampeni Aloje. I would also like to thank the authorities of the University of Botswana for providing the enabling environment without which it would have been impossible for us to host conferences of this nature. The head of physics department, Professor Deban, was very quick in appreciating the merits of a long-term collaboration with ICTP. The government of Botswana was very supportive of this initiative, and we look forward to enjoying this support in years ahead. 